The first steps in zero contrast PCI after periprocedural hydration is going to be to put a wire down the LED or down the circumflex and Ivis wow. the left main. Give me That's another wire. That was pretty straightforward. And the reason you put the wires down the major vessels is to create a wire skeleton so you have fluoroscopic landmarks through which we can do the case. Yeah. But Give you know, me another so wire. So for us yeah. to left with main just, with just intervention, one wire, do you always have put two Y? No, so in, in the, no, in this situation, I think I would start with just this one wire and okay. take the IVUS and define the left go, main. Go. Let, us, let us take an IVUS. So Keep take the IVUS and let's just define the left main. If that's not a problem, then we move on to wire skeletonizing the circ. Is any difference between your okay. IVUS, the Y in the circumflex, the left main, or the LED to so the left main? I, th that's, a, that's a good question. The key, the key is if there's an eccentric left main, then the key is to disengage the guide catheter enough, but keep it coaxial so that your, your image is straight. If your left main is very, very short, then the answer is yes. And typically I will IVUS on both of them because you get slightly different views. But it's pretty obvious most of the time if there is very little or no plaque at the ostium of the left main on the IVUS that you don't need to do both vessels. You know, you have those odd left mains that are like cisterns, right? They're massive cisterns where they're almost non-existent. They're almost separate ostia. That's a, that's a different beast than this, where you have a defined left main here. So before we start iversing the artery from circ to left main, I'll pull my guide back, right? On that's the way. So what you do is deliver your ivus first, yeah. then pull your guide back, and then slowly pull your ivus, or slowly do a pullback on the ivus. But the key is, remember, you have an undilated lesion in the circ. Yeah. So when you deliver into the circ, which is why I would have put totally the wire right. in the LED, when you deliver in the circ, you just have to be careful not to go too far because you don't want to adversely impact that lesion. Do you like to put a bumper wire at this moment so you know the ostium is not is well seen? What's that, sorry? Could you a say that again? A bumper wire to the Yeah, you, so the, the idea is that just if you've got IVUS, you don't need the bumper wire, right? Just tell me. Because you're going to end up seeing the ostium on the actual image. So that, that's, that's enough. Looks so, good, huh? so that yeah, looks good. So ju just just slow down though, right? It's because yeah. you, you need to create your landing zones here a little bit. So yeah, I, do, I would recommend doing one thing at a time, which yeah. is pulling this IVUS out of the circ and doing just the left main, because that's going to be your primary lesion. Okay. If you, if you try to do both at the same time, you won't be able to co-register. So here you're fine. Back off your guide catheter. And let's turn the IVUS on to live, please. So you're co live, live, please. Yeah, yeah, co-registration. Okay, so cine here, just short cine here. You're in the circ here, right? You can see that that's good. Okay, now let's go on to pullback. Okay, and we can focus on the IVUS if we can. Get the camera onto the IVUS, please. If, yeah, it if is there. See, great. It is there. So as you pull back, you can see that there really isn't much in the way of disease here. Just floral for me so we can see where the IVUS catheter is. You can see there's a little bit of disease Calcium. on the inferior aspect. It's calcific, but it's not flow limiting. We continue to pull back. There's a little bit of plaque. And look at the ostium. It is, it is the ostium of the circ is completely normal. This is coming back into the left main. You see at about 3 o'clock, there's a little bit of plaque. But the, ostium, the left main is largely undiseased. As you continue to pull back, you see osteal disease here. Cine here, please. Cine. So that's good. And now you're well out into the aorta. So now you can pause and stop. Okay, and we can come back to the IVUS and let's look at the left main. Slowly, slowly come back. Okay, so that's it. Come back a little bit more. That's about your tightest point, right? You can come back here and there a little bit just as the ostium opens up is I think where your tightest point was. No, you've got, you've got a little bit of dropout, so I would come either in one frame or out one frame. There, measure that. So I don't use trace assist because I don't think it... It does a particularly good job. The dynamic review is good because it gives you an idea of the size of the vessel. But the more dots you put in, the better off you are, right? You get a better sense of, of the total area. So there, you're going to undercut the left main a little bit at the top. But I think you're seeing here that you're nowhere near six. You're well above six, right? So can I just come around here just a little bit for a second? And may I? One of the other strategies that you can use, if you've used dynamic review, is I would turn this off. You can delete here, and then actually just take your slider and slide back and forth, right? So do you see here, you, you almost wonder if it's getting tight, but you're actually outside of the vessel. So 
if you, if you end up finding roughly this point, which is probably your tightest, you can even do uh, a straight draw area measurement, right? Where you can start here and you can create the contours yourself. At this point, you have a great handle on the plaque. And this is probably going to be your most conservative area assessment. And it's still eight, yeah. right? So, so you're quite comfortable leaving the left main alone. Okay. And we can turn our attention to the circumflex now. So at this point, you don't need to wire down the LEDs. You can take the IVIS out, re-engage your guide catheter, and you've got to wire down the main circ, right? So I would at this point, just so you can create a wire skeleton, create yourself markers, I would put a wire down OM1 because you don't want your stent going anywhere past that. And the key with that wire is to try to get it to sit on the lesser curvature of the vessel, right? So this is not the one where you knuckle it and you push down so the wire pushes up against the greater curvature. You keep it unknuckled and you allow it to lay on the lesser curvature of the vessel. So Any workhorse wire. The same wire you want me no, to... No, keep this wire, take a okay. second wire okay. and put it into OM1. Get me another wire. And whatever wire you have in the circ, just push that down all the way. Make sure it doesn't come out because that's going to be your working wire. And in the meantime, you can get a 2.0 compliant balloon as well because that'll be your pre dill balloon. 2 by 15 real sure. Two or 225 or 25, whatever. It's a plenty big vessel to accommodate any of those things. No, no. 2 by 15, Jay. Perfect. Okay. So, one of the strategies you can use with lesions that are like this, where they're not ultra tight, and with operators like this who are highly experienced, is you can take the balloon and actually inflate, put it on the wire, not off the wire, and inflate it to 10 atmospheres outside the body. When it's winged, and you come then negative, when you try to put it past the lesion, you'll feel a little bit of resistance. You can use that tactile feel to tell you approximately where your lesion starts. So you'll get a reasonable idea of where you're going to be going. These are just sort of easy, quick tricks of the trade to be able to do the case. Lovely. So, oh, I your wires come No, back. no problem. Sorry. So this is no big deal when you haven't dilated. When you've dilated, it's, it's yeah, never a good uh, thing. Yeah, that's right. So we'll put this wire down into OM1 well, now. I think we need to learn this, huh? This. Mm -hmm. And the key, once again, Saab, is that you're going to put the wire down the artery, but you're not going to put it super, super distal because you, don't, you want it to stay on the lesser curvature of the vessel, not the greater. This is the LAD, obviously. LAD. So you, you, you can potentially... There you go, there you go. There. Okay, that's good. So okay. There. So, so what you've done now is you've come around the curve, but it's not knuckled, so you're going to sit on the lesser curvature. I'd bury your first wire a little bit more if you can just so that you have the tip into something very, very safe because your IVIS is there, there we go. Okay. Now let's take that 2 balloon, put it on the wire before you inflate it outside the body, otherwise on, the internal on lumen circumflex. collapses. Right, on the circumflex on wire. wire. Yes. Yeah. And generally when you're wire skeletonizing, one of the other tricks of the trade is use wires that are different colors. So if I'm using three wires, typically I'll take a Xeon Blue, a BMW and a Pro Water because one's blue, one's green and one's black. Right, you don't have to use towels then. And so when you're on the wire, just before you put it inside the body, take that balloon up to 10 atmospheres. 10 atmosphere. But the key is it's on the wire. If it's not on the wire, it will collapse the internal lumen and then it becomes a real pain to put it on the wire. So take it to 10 atmospheres outside the body so you're intentionally winging it and making yeah, it right. larger. Yeah, and then come that down. will give us some resistance. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. a very, very so nice that is, point. So that Excellent. is the most important bit, right? Is your... With zero contrast PCI, you're, it's not that you're doing this blind. Do you're just it. learning to see differently. Excellent. You're learning to see by so how you feel. So it's all about a blind man exactly. using a tactile feel. It's, 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 it's tactile feel. It's learning what to see it? with Why the IVIS, all of these things. There is no magic here. This what is a very straightforward right? procedure to do. Uh -huh. So again, I would bury your what wire a little bit. You don't want to risk that coming yeah, back. I will, I will, I will. Why, there we go. And let's keep yeah. that where it is. And okay. now with the, with the balloon just, going uh, in, you yeah, tell okay. us when you start to feel the tactile feedback. Uh, yeah. And when you do, we'll sinny that because that'll give you a rough idea of where the proximal edge of the, the, the tightest point of the vessel you is. You know, Indian guys will like this because many times the balloons are being reused. That's right. And That's they right. can be of great use here. Yeah. This is the perfect one for a, what do they call it, Oxford balloon? Oxford. Yes. Right? See, I've, I'm learning the lingo, right? Yeah. yeah we shall have to test this is perfect for an Oxford balloon. Right? Okay, so, so here, there, you feel resistance there? Because I can see your balloons start to hang up. The, te the Tekeru's or Rayuri's, they have a slip yeah. coat on them, right? So it, it actually reduces that tactile feel. And I'd come back a hair. 
Just come back a little bit. There. Take it up there and go up slowly. Very slow and very low pressure, and right? We want to cine, 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 cine. Cine. Not cine, we, sorry, floral while you're doing uh, it. We want to see the waist, yes. right? Yes. Floral while you're doing it. Now, cuz start coming up. Two, Two four, three, four, six. There. You see there, the waist? Yes. Okay, floral so store that. Floral store that. Save. They will save it. Good. By default, they will okay. save it. Okay. So now you have a good handle of where the middle of the lesion was, right? So now let's take the balloon. Yeah, so you can deflate the balloon and let's take that out and go back in with the IVUS. Now, for this IVUS, you're looking for three different things. Okay, it's the same workflow we always use with imaging. You want to understand your distal vessel landing zone. So you want something that's normal. You want to understand the lesion length. And with zero contrast PCI, it's really critical that the guide catheter is well engaged because if not, your guide catheter is bouncing back and forth and your length measurements become useless. But if your guide catheter is well engaged and your system is stable, then as you pull back, you actually get an accurate measurement of length on the IVUS. Then you, when you're starting the IVUS run, you cine, right? That's your distal landing zone. Then you let it pull back, and then where you select a proximal landing zone, which is less than 30% plaque, you cine again, right? Then you just pick a stent that lines up with your proximal or your distal landing zone, and you deploy. It's easy. There's, that's the beauty of this procedure, is anybody can do it. A, pa a panel, Samir, Tag, John, and other, uh, you know, esteemed panelists, anybody of you have done these type of things? So we've done zero contrast PCI. Uh, I think it's an elegant technique. Uh, the one thing I would say is that I have a conceptual problem with it because I believe that contrast nephropathy is a misnomer and it's more embolic nephropathy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I, uh, that's another sorry. debate. <laughs> yeah, the zero contrast uh, PCI are uh, using the technique, the iris guiding, uh, but I did not using the balloon uh, inflated the lesion first. Uh, what's the advantage again for the balloon invasion? It, ju first? it just gives you a general idea of approximately where your lesion is. So just stop there for a moment and go live on the IVUS as you advance it. We okay. This so so you see you're right in the middle of the lesion, right? So advance the IVUS a little bit, push Later. it forward a little until you get to your landing zone. So let's watch the IVUS now instead of the fluoro to make sure you're getting to a landing zone. So keep coming, keep coming. There. Okay, this is, uh, this is quite diseased here. I'd come further forward. There. This is getting good. Okay, good. So cine here now. Cine. So we got okay. the distal landing there. zone. There. So that's your distal landing zone. Okay? And this is the point of the VAR wire skeletonization business. So now let's go auto pull back. So just press pull back here. Okay. And now let's watch this and get ready to cine again. So it's now pulling back. You're not seeing a lot of back and forth because the guide's very well engaged. And you know you've got lots of safety room on the distal edge there, right? Mm-hmm. Right? There's plenty of safety that you have in terms yeah, of length. Yeah, that's right. Right? Which is fine. You know, typically with ultra lower zero contrast PCI, you take a slightly longer stent than necessary. Right? So here's your plaque where you've pre-dilated. Now, it's important to look at the composition of the plaque, right? So the plaque here is largely fibrotic plaque, yes. right? There's no real calcification there. That's so right. I'm not worried about stenting this, but what people will be so focused on is where to put the stent, they'll forget to prepare the plaque. There, see, there's some calcification there, right? But it's only in one quadrant. It's not going to limit stent expansion because you have the entire rest of the vessel available yeah, to there's you. Some there's the ongoing circ that's coming in. So again, just one, one and a half quadrants, not something I'd be overly worried about. Okay, fluoro here, now cine. Okay. So this is that's, there's still a little, there's still a but little bit of disease there. So lot, we're going to wait just a second. And cine here. Cine, there. So that's your landing zone. Okay, because there was less than 30% plaque there. Okay. okay? And you'll see your, your other wire come in in just a minute. And cine here now. Wire is seen. So that's the point at which you tell yourself, do not go past this point with that's my stand right. for any reason, because I'm going to end up landing halfway across the osteum. That's, right. so that's your, your safety marker. And right? how do you decide And now you can, stop and you can stop. stop and take it out. So let's look at the IVUS now, and we'll make a decision. Right? So this was the point of really engaging the IVUS well, right? Wow. Is so that your length measurement is clean. Can I grab that? So you're, here's your distal landing zone, right? You see that it's a largely disease-free distal landing zone. And if you're going to measure EEL to EEL, this is a three millimeter vessel distally, okay? Now, let's scan back, okay? And your disease starts here, right? So let's come a little bit more distal to that. So roughly B1, right, within that safety zone. 
you can guarantee yourself that a 2.5 stent is going to be just fine. Okay? Then as you pull back, you've got your lesion here. It's a fairly long lesion. Okay? And now here's your bifurcation point. Here's your landing zone. You've got some plaque here, right? And if you, you know, you can use the trace assist piece and, you know, and optimize the, the uh, analysis and you'll get a handle on approximately how much plaque there is. Though, as I said, I don't use trace assist very much because I don't like it that much. I, I'd rather do it with, you know, m manually so you get the experience using the, the catheter and the technique, right? So you're less than 50% plaque, right? So if you're stuck, you can land here. You just have to go lumen to lumen, okay? But your best landing zone is about here, right? So that was at B3. So let's take this now. Your proximal landing zone is going to be roughly here, 343, roughly here to the lumen, right? 315, right? So a 3.0 is going to be a plenty NC balloon for that. And now let's just do a line length measurement, right? So there's th this thing's, it's, I usually do this manually, but there's a variety of ways. You've got bookmarks here, right? So let's get rid of uh, the other bookmarks just to make things, make things easier, right? So we can get rid of this get rid of this, okay? And now you just go length measurements to bookmark, right? Alternatively, you can take the line and you can physically measure from here to here or to here. So if we wanted safety, okay, you could, well, a 38 is going to be a bit long, right? So I would, I would take, I would be very comfortable with a 32, right? 32 or you know, or 38, whatever. I, I would probably go with like a 2532 here synergy, put that in, or and post dilate it distally with a 2515. Approximately, I take a 3015 and you're done. You just repeat Ivis at the end. And if you wanted to be strict to the protocol, you'd put a physiologic wire down at the end to prove that your physiology is normal, and you do a brief echo at the end to make sure there's no effusion. Then you're true, true zero. But here, I'm sure if you took one 3cc three, three 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 picture, nobody would be upset. So let's maybe get the stent out. If you're okay with a 2532. 2532. Yeah. Uh, get me synergy. And what you'll do is line it up with your proximal landing zone. Because you know you have the length to get to a safe space distally, but your Can disease you is proximal. Me the NGO? Right? NGO, NGO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The previous angio. Right, so with zero contrast, we systematically end up taking longer stents because we're going largely from normal to normal, and that's what builds in safety into the technique. I think so. Right? I, 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 the idea is to build in safety. Perfect. Okay. And you can see that there's diffuse bits of disease right through that, right? So what you're going to do is just make sure that you land a little distal to that marker. All right. right? Now come to that one and get 2.5 by 32. Perfect. Yeah. Just beyond the, uh, so yeah. now let's, let's, let's cycle back, cycle back. So one frame back, please. Okay. So do you see where that proximal marker is? Yeah. Your landing zone is ever so slightly above that. So it's somewhere between those two. So take this now and make this a reference. Freeze it on the side, on that little corner. Perfect. Now all you're going to do is deliver the stent and line up just proximal to that marker and That's deploy. That's right. And the one thing that is important to mention that we didn't do at the beginning that is critical in any PCI on a chronic kidney disease patient is the periprocedural hydration, right? Yeah. Is the, you know, one cc per kilo if your LVEDP is over 18, three cc's per kilo between 13 and 18, five cc's per kilo okay. below 13. We don't prehydrate anymore because of data that's shown that Sorry. there's a smattering of patients with LVEDPs all over the place coming in, right? So, so we, we hydrate them with that uh, LVEDP-based hydration strategy, and then we do it for one hour after the procedure. So go ahead. I would bury your wire again because you're going to need the support. That's nice. And then we'll drop the... And what I would do is go past the lesion and pull the stent back okay. because it's much easier to bring it backwards than forward. Right, your, your tension's out of the system then. So there we go. So come pull back a little bit. Okay. And this looks just, good. So stop there. Wait. Now, just Sorry. one second. So now toggle back to your view. Toggle back to the view, the reference view we had. Come off fluoro. 
Well, that is the view. Watch yeah, a bigger so one. Come back. Come back there. Now, keeping this in mind, now press on the floral petal. Oh, did we did we did we move the did we move the table? The key is to not move the table. So, uh, yeah, don't move the table, please. So c come back to the just for the audience so that they understand the procedure. No, no, that's that's fine. We haven't moved the camera. We're good. So there and just floral. Floral, there. I so you're you're right there. Take it up. Go. Go up. Go. Twelve. Good. Uh, and yeah. then let's open a two five fifteen NC balloon and a three zero fifteen NC balloon, please. But uh, you think uh, uh, to me it looks like if, if you do the way it has expanded, if you do uh, IVAS, it will look if you, perfect. Yeah, if you want to IVAS it before post dilating, and you can prove there's no need, that's fine. Right. What, what I, is your what is uh, your take? My concern is that proximally the vessel is large enough. So that you need a 3 approximately. But somehow my old eye feels that it has expanded very mm. well. What and, is and my you my, are very my, young. my my new Ivis eye yeah. my new yeah. Ivis eye says that you need a so bigger stand approximately. So what is what is the panel's take? We have five more minutes and we'll finish. I don't have an Ivis eye. <laughs> yeah, and me neither. That's so why I use the Ivis. You are like me, old eye, yeah. Samir. I think I would I would sit and see what it looks like okay. before the balloon. I, I would, I would, for what it's worth, I would take a 3.0 NC balloon proximally because it's not about expansion there, or it's not about expansion alone there. It's about sizing too, right? And there's a size issue. It's a bigger vessel proximally than it is distally. That's right. Okay. So 3 by 15, get me NC emerge. And what you do is leave, so cone in on the proximal strut. And when you post dilate, leave the proximal strut. Let the shoulder of the balloon get that. You can go in even further if you want to at lower pressures, but then you've got a fully expanded stem. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now the question I have for you is, are you going to do the final picture? I think we'll mm. take a final picture. Yeah. So uh, this is this is for the panel. Because because what? this is a live demonstration yeah. course and I don't want the audience to go away with the idea Fair that enough. they have not shown uh, the final I, I, so I would okay. actually go a step further and ask the panel, is there a difference between zero contrast and three or four cc's at the end? I don't think so. There Me neither. No, right? Yeah. Which is why I... Uh, you may do the procedure with nothing, but I almost always take a final picture because I don't think I'm hurting the patient. You said exactly. the right? new... The name, they change the near zero. Yeah, it should be ultra low, right? Or near zero. Contrast, yeah. Because there's really no, it's doable zero, but there's just no need, right? If, if Only we, difference, uh, Sanjog, I feel is, I would cone in if just I were you, yeah. mm -hmm. I would not have done anything and straight away go on ahead with the imaging. But uh, let us do whatever you say. Go here, just right? I would go in with the NC balloon just a hair. Little push. Just a little bit in. There, and just send that okay. and make sure that we're okay there. Yeah. You can uh, come back. Come Sam back a little there. Uh, a little bit too far back. There. Take it. Okay. Yes. Sam? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Can I ask, you, can 12, I ask one 14, question? 12. Maybe can I say something? Sure. Just, so yeah. Maybe next Sinead year um, have a debate yeah. about whether contrast-induced nephropathy exists because <laughs> many people think it doesn't, including me, think it's complete nonsense. It doesn't exist. It's procedure-related <laughs> nephropathy. It's atheroembolization. It's not contrast. Show me the data where contrast causes a problem. And I'm going to be controversial okay. saying you cause more harm by avoiding contrast than by, uh, uh, than by using contrast. So there you go. Debate for next year. I totally agree, Rajiv. We talked a little bit about it earlier, but I think that's the point. And if, you know, uh, I mean, this is very elegant technique, no question. But um, you know, is it really driving outcomes? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think the the retort to that is that if you're going to talk about atheroembolous disease as a as the primary deliverer, then where are the re urine results that are showing urine eosinophilia? Right. The the argument is similar. Yeah. And I then on both sides, you can say that there isn't really clear data. I think and so what we do is try to reduce anything that can potentially be an exacerbate. Exactly. I think it's a good, you know, uh, item in the toolbox. But sir, I tell you one thing that uh, I, I feel good because I learned this technique. This is fine. But, you know, 
my mind thinks the other way, like I am doing a case and if the Catholic conks off at a time, mm. I can, <laughs> I can <laughs> use this. Yeah. <laughs> if they, yeah. if suddenly uh, the contrast yeah, shortage yes. worldwide becomes a real problem. That's true. Right? Because the, the other issue is then, I mean, the, there is no direct randomized data, right? But if you then look back to the EHJ paper by Ziad Ali, and you look at their approach, which was true, true, zero, their CIN rate, despite stage four CKD across their entire population was zero. It was literally zero. And if we're going to take a, a group of patients that are at high risk and implicate something, then it's hard for me to believe that you'd have a true, true, zero rate if you had just atheroembolous okay. disease as the cause. Because okay. there were many of those patients that were ephemeral, right? So just Cine again. There, that's just a document and pull back. So let's look at our distal edge. So this is all very normal vessel. Is this technique only limited to a uh, non-complex PCI? Or so you, I mean, do I'll, I'll, I'll present a case later today Road where I did a bifurcation left main CTO OM1 bifurcation search CTO OM CTO and it was zero. So it's doable. It's not a hard procedure. All you have to do is use the same principles. I think I think this is very elegant. So this is very nicely expanded. Yeah. Does anybody anybody question that? And what you'll, I think you'll see is that the stent's going to get bigger as you get proximal. There's, you know, you could arguably make it a bit bigger here, but it's not so bad, right? Your, your minimal stent area is going to be well above your distal minimal lumen area, which is really what you're trying to tame. There, this is where you took up a 3.0, and I'm sure you can agree that it's, it's, a, it's a nice looking vessel there. There's no substantial plaque prolapse. Here comes your proximal edge. Uh, you came across a branch. And drum roll. So this is where the proximal struts where we left them. We didn't post dilate those, and there you're done. Perfect landing. Lovely. Nice. Very so good. You're finished. Yes, we will take one nice view. House. You know, we are five. Okay, fine. Okay. okay and and so oh, and just before you just before you um, take the picture, yeah. what I generally do is make sure that I fill the guide so that uh, you're yeah. not doing the slow injection. You're doing one hard, fast injection, three cc's, you'll pacify yeah. everything and you're done. The but then stay on Cine long to make sure you have no wire Okay, injury. okay, no problem. Yep, that's the Paul Tierstein me method. Inject. Yeah. Okay, okay. I, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. While I was training at Columbia, Paul was still going back and forth, so I actually learned that from him. So we calculate the... Yeah. Super. Excellent. Excellent. Very nice. That's that. Good job. So, uh, you know, as far as the live demonstration session is concerned, we call it a day and afternoon we have some excellent didactics. Yes. You know, uh, the guys sitting in the audience must listen to everybody because everybody has come all the way from different corners of the world and they all have you know, their stand in the, those subjects and I will, you know, appreciate that we assemble on time to listen to them and there is going to be an NGO session last where some of the young guys of the country are going to present, you know, their work and their complexities and they have, want to have some opinion on those type of cases. So I appreciate you all, you know, for uh, being patient throughout one and a half day of uh, this uh, course and uh, uh, last half also we are going to make it very interesting uh, 17th edition of trico is going to be held on 5th and uh, 4th and 5th of november next year please note it in your calendar and before uh, we will meet again but before that you know we are going to meet in the afternoon in the last session but there won't be any live demonstration now yes. thank you all <laughs> thank you dr patel for thank brilliant you. cases both the cases one is heavily calcified and another is zero contrast <laughs> thank you. and thank you dr kalra 